Can we catch a cow instead? All right, let's keep going. This is so <laughs> dumb. What are we doing? Exotic food. There's no better place than Southeast Asia to find food that'll make your average Midwesterner do a double take. It tastes like really good. Born and raised in central Minnesota, I grew up on meat and potatoes. The craziest thing I ate growing up was hot dish. Now that I've lived in Asia for the last 11 years, the foods that once seemed unthinkable are now my new favorites. Today we're back in Myanmar on a mission to uncover the most unique, most unexpected dishes I've seen anywhere. From roadside insects to whatever the heck this thing is. I'm putting my mouth on the line, gambling with my gut, all to show you really great food cannot be judged by appearance alone. Let's eat. Well, hey guys, good morning and welcome to Mandalay. The economic center of the north and the second largest city in Myanmar with a population of more than 1 million. With that many people to feed, I'm bound to find some unique tasty treats. This shop, very unique. I've seen something like this in Vietnam before. This place has been here over 50 years, second generation, still no signboard. The name of the shop is just the shop across from the Yunnan Buddhist temple. No signage, because here's the thing, if you don't exist, you don't have to pay taxes. Let's just jump into it. Our first dish of the day, their bestseller, pork brain noodles. This brainy dish starts off with a simple flat noodle, then soy sauce, then homemade spicy pork curry, the pig brain, scallions, and fried garlic. I'm gonna just give that a mix. Oh yeah. Like, look at that, man. I'm gonna start with just the noodles. Nice, soft, flat, a little spicy, a little chili oil in there. No super strong flavors. They've got some lime here. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of that. The noodles with the brain, this should change the flavor profile just a little bit. Okay, I like it. Super creamy. The brain almost tastes like chicken. They say it's a secret recipe, but it doesn't look that complicated. Our second dish, cutting to the chase with a boiled pork brain bowl. If those noodles are impeding your ability to scoop massive amounts of brain matter into your mouth, this is the dish for you. It's basically just chicken broth and a whole think tank of pork brains. This looks intimidating. Check it out. They say the more wrinkles your brain has, the smarter you are. Is that monk still there? Oh man, our background is gone. Now it's just an empty wall. I was saying, probably top three pig brains I've ever had. I think the best move though is still to probably mix that with some noodles, but that's it. We've done it, guys. It's been a great video. Thank you for coming to Mandalay. It's, uh, it's just a two minute video this time, so. And be sure to check out our second channel, more. Okay, here's the truth. Today in Mandalay, it's all about exotic foods. Exotic to who? Well, mainly to me. It's kind of normal to folks around here. The brains, certainly not something I grew up with. So we're gonna go throughout the city and even outside of the city to see what kind of extreme, interesting, unique, or maybe even bizarre foods we can find. Are you ready? I'm ready also. And then they'll think I took a bite. We are moving out of the bustling city and heading to Joy Na Fa Village, a couple hours outside Mandalay. Hi. Hi. This old village is as traditional as it gets, but one thing I did not expect to find here, a village bar. This is the local watering hole, where locals come to throw some back and get some one-of-a-kind food at the same time. Guys, after breakfast, we've now come out to Drenapa Village. My guys here, I don't know if they're having a good morning or still having a good night from the night before. Oh, thank you. I'll tell you something, that's not water. The local favorite comes from these palm trees, emitting a sap that's easily fermented and turned into powerful, hangover-inducing alcohol. <laughs> oh, that was strong. Oh. 24 ever. 24 ever. <laughs> <laughs> he said 24 ever. I think that's a new way of saying 24 seven. All day, every day, 365, what's up in the hizzy? Before I get too buzzed at 10 a.m. in the morning, we're gonna see if one of the locals will climb up the tree and show us how they extract the tree juice. All right, bye-bye. Cool. These guys are so wasted. According to the locals, in order to collect that sweet, sweet palm nectar, I must climb this somewhat treacherous looking ladder. Here to demonstrate the ladder, this guy. Uh, name Bakaluko, da da. How do you say it? Name Blue His name is Ankai. It's nice to meet you. They said just a few days ago. Oh, this is not funny. 
They said just a few days ago, someone fell from the tree and broke their leg. There's a real element of danger here. He's gonna go up there. Go ahead. Yeah, he's gonna exchange these pots. At the very top of the tree, there's all these uh, branches that have been cut and they're kind of leaking sap from the heavens. I'm just saying, I'm really impressed at like the lengths they, they go to be able to drink. Oh, he's done it. So now with four clay pots full, he's gonna come down, hopefully not dripping a single drop. Oh, there's a few drops. Okay, but he's not gonna drip like 10 drops. Okay, that's a lot of drops. Man, look at all this. That's incredible. Here, in these clay pots, all this sap comes from the tree. It's very sweet. That'll get you diabetes. So I'm being told within just a few hours, they add something to it to speed up the fermentation process. And from there, it's time to party. You ready to drink? <laughs> Yeah. My life, once again, has meaning. How's it going? Okay. Here's the problem. What are you guys eating? You need to eat something with all this booze you're drinking. My next mission, if I choose to accept it, is to go on a dangerous hunt into the wild to find some food for my buddies at the local bar. I'll be back soon. Joining me, a local hunter and expert marksman, wielding his weapon of choice. A, uh, long stick with a knife tied to the end and he can poke animals with that. Cool. The hunt has begun, but already we've been met with our first obstacle. We're on foot, but the hunting grounds are miles away. Luckily, I'm able to hitch a ride on a local grocery car. Even better, I've found some snacks I can stockpile for my friends at the bar. I'm here with my man, Angu Mi. I have my tool here, it's a homemade slingshot. Check that out. It's made with wood. And then from there, these big rubber straps are connected with just a thousand rubber bands. It is a lethal homemade weapon. We're hunting. Anything could happen, especially nothing. Ammunition. Right now we're on the hunt for a fairly common countryside rodent. Field rats, a protein-packed food source in these parts. The only problem is sneaking up on them. Oops. Can we catch a cow instead? All right, let's keep going. This is so dumb. What are we doing? Wow, we've been out here a couple hours now. It's hot, unforgiving, and so far, no rats, no creatures of any kind have we seen under this blazing hot sun. We're hunting. Anything could happen, especially nothing. All right, do you have another solution? What do you think we should do? Oh, dude. If you just had a bag of rats this whole time, we, you could have just given me, oh, there's blood too. Yeah, enough of this hunting. What are we thinking? Come on. Ridiculous. The hunt wasn't as epic as I'd hoped, but still, we're not coming back empty handed. A bag full of rats for my comrades will light up that bamboo bar with excitement and hours of singing. Anyways, enough acting. Let's get back. While cooking is underway, I came across another unidentifiable alien food in the village. This thing. It's actually a smoked hare. Very similar to a rabbit, but kind of with longer legs and flatter and darker. <laughs> joke, that's a bad joke. Super unique. They're gonna actually prepare this food for us as well. That's sick, man. Good find. Oh yeah, yeah we can shake hands. We're formal here, we can be formal. The hare will be made into a hare salad. First, it's roasted for five minutes, then chopped into little bits. Fleshy and meaty bits are mixed in a bowl along with tomato, onion, fresh lime, salt, and oil. Here, we've got some palm sap candy that she's making. You can see it's already become a little bit more viscous and brown. Wow, what is this? A leaf from a tree. Can you do it in a different direction, kid? Eventually, this is gonna really thicken up and be kind of a, a sweet candy. Does she know that word? Next, rat meat. I can tell those buzzed up bar goers are gonna love this. The rats are first skinned and cleaned, then marinated with turmeric, MSG, and salt. They can be prepared two ways, deep fried or grilled. We'll go with fried. Here we are, it is finally time to eat. I can't say I'm not a little bit disappointed. After all this preparation, all this work, the guys who I was coming here to hang out with, to drink with, to eat with, they've all gone home. There's this guy over here, he's taking a nap. 
but the food's still here. I'm gonna try it out myself. To begin with, a little bit more palm wine. We got a pretty interesting spread here. We've got the palm sap that's been reduced down into, that's kind of a, the palm candy. This one, I'm not gonna give it away. Can you guys guess? It's not a fruit, it's not a vegetable. That's right, it's rat meat. This is some lungs, heart. What is this even? Is that a liver? Producers in the background just going, don't, no, don't do it. You brought me here. It tastes a little chocolatey. Oh, there's a liver taste too. Some thigh meat here. Oily, kind of fatty meat. I hate to be that guy, but it tastes like fried chicken. I'm definitely not gonna regret this, right? Right? And then here, the hair. I think this meat's gonna be hard as heck. Let's find out for sure. Oh, that's pretty good. It is like rabbit jerky. I mean, hair jerky. If you're out here like me, hanging out, drinking all morning, it's nice to have something to chew on. Last of all, dessert. Right here, the palm sweet reduction that's become, they look like little brownies, but they're dense and heavy. Let's try it out. That's pretty good. It has that nice caramelized, almost burnt flavor to it. Super sweet, like brown sugar. That's it. It's pretty straightforward food, guys. Rat meat, hair meat, palm sweets. Insane village bar food I did not expect to see here or anywhere for that matter. With my mission accomplished, I'm heading back to the city for more. Here in Chinatown, when the sun goes down, the vibe all changes. You'll find food stalls, fruits, vegetables, mobile vendors carrying their restaurants atop their heads, and some of my favorite far out local cuisine, starting with a fish skin salad. Well, hi, ma'am. How you doing? We saw you walking on the street. You had your whole food supplies on your head, and then now it's on the table. She is making a fried fish type of salad, and she's gonna show us right now one of these. Sign language, effective. Oh, she doesn't know what I'm saying. <laughs> She's got a kind of a vermicelli salad and then the secret ingredient right here, battered fried fish that she's just kind of breaking up, putting inside, chilies on top of that. So this is it, super interesting because from the whole fish, she's like, I don't need no fish head, I don't need no fish meat. Just give me the skin and I'm gonna make a beautiful dish from that. I'm gonna try just the battered skin. That's yummy. It has a hint of a fishy seafood flavor. Otherwise, it's just crunchy. It's like a crouton for your salad. I'm gonna get a nice bite right here with the vermicelli. Try it out. Mmm. <laughs> No joke, that's quite good. The vermicelli noodle salad is delicious, super spicy. But once you have the crispy fish skin on there, you don't even realize it's fish skin at all. Thank you. Folks throughout Southeast Asia love their bugs. Not everyone chooses the bug life, but those who do are loyal followers. This vendor is selling a nearly mutated looking alien creature, bigger than I have ever seen before. Boom! Last location of the evening, we've come here. She's selling crickets. These are the biggest crickets I've ever seen in my life. I had giant crickets with Mark Weens. <laughs> But sorry, Mark, these are even bigger. These crickets are so big that she can actually take off the legs and sell just the legs. Like it was a, a chicken drumstick. I'm gonna work my way up to these. These are the beasts, the big daddies. Boom, it's happening. She puts it in a can. That's a huge portion. And then she puts it in this bowl. She puts in some fried curry leaves, some fried garlic, and then ew, a lot of chili. Oh my God, what are you trying to do? Oh, I'm really gonna regret that later. She puts it in a plastic bowl. Thank you. Okay, here we go. So meaty, the flavors are quite nice. This would be perfect with beer. It's salty, crazy spicy. What you see in front here, these are the male crickets. This is the giantest cricket. oh sure. It's so big, look, I'm gonna put it in the palm of my hand. We'll get a close up, you can see it. So this is my hand and in my hand, you can see it's, it's covering almost my whole hand, even my wedding ring. Wait, hold on. They have been fried, they've been seasoned with garlic and ginger and I'm gonna try it right now. It's like Lay's potato chips. It's mostly air in the bag, in the cricket too, also mostly air. Similar to the legs, very papery, super fried, crunchy, and a little salty. Behind here on this exclusive VIP table, these are the female crickets. What's special about them, these are full of eggs. It looks like little rice grains that are yellow. All right, let's try it out. You know, I kind of like it. It's got a little more flavor. It's a little juicy. You can definitely tell it has something a little extra. A young cow. I am cow. 
A young cow. A young cow. Mm. We did it. Next time, our best ever Myanmar food journey ends at a Buddhist monastery where I go to extreme lengths to learn the secret diet of Myanmar's Buddhist monks. I'll tell you one thing, you don't have to give up to be a monk here. That's delicious food. This is really good. Kebabs in Iran. Mmm. Bun me in Vietnam. I love it. Budan sausage in the US. I like that a lot. There's one thing that connects us all. It brings out the best in us. <laughs> Showing that despite our differences, you want to test the blood? What? Huh? At the end of the day, we're all people. <laughs> Sometimes very hungry people. Mm -mm -mm. So, this is an ode to the part of life that unifies us all food. It's time I'm letting you go. This time I know it for sure. Just thought I should let you know. Yeah, now, no one's so and be sure to check out our second channel, more Best Ever Food Review Show, for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A oh, peace. A peace. Can you do peace? Peace? Cool. I freaked out 165 people today. <laughs>